Hello, a community of spouses and spouses to be. I am back today to speak on the subject of sex. Yes, let's talk about sex, baby. Hey, we're going to talk about sex in the marriage covenant. And as we continue on in our series of Back to the Basis, I just want to touch on a few things in reference to sex going into the marriage covenant. Um, I will do a more in detail um, teaching slash videos on uh, sex. This is just kind of hitting the surface. But are, are, there are a few things I want to just kind of pull out as you prepare um, and as you are, you know, going into the marriage covenant. Um, some of us going into the marriage covenant, we were already fully sexually involved. Um, we, um, you know, this is the real world. So we, we was not uh, the virgins or we wasn't, um, without, you know, being sexually. And that's okay. Um, you totally can ask God for forgiveness and move on and start and start a new slate. Um, I do uh, encourage you, um, and I'm making this video not just for ones, you know, around the world, but even for my children one day who may see this video, I want them to know that you can go being a virgin and you can go into a marriage covenant being a virgin. It's, that is that is whoa that is so honorable in the sight of god but at the same time i do not want to condemn you if you are not god is a forgiving god and so he does forgive us and so but i do want to just speak on the ones who are are uh, are about to enter into the marriage covenant and you know you in that in that stage of you know we're engaged um we kind of are you know in the middle of you know preparing for our our marriage I want to just kind of just challenge you to just take a halt and pause from each other if you are in you know involved with each other sexually right now take a take a pause from each other and the reason I say that is because sex is one of the benefits in marriage in the marriage covenant it is one of the benefits and so you want to just go in with God um cleansing your body getting rid of all soul ties getting rid of any and everything um any filth any lust anything that um that has injured you um any wounds past wounds you want to just ask god to just just cleanse you out to just water you down um and just plead the blood of jesus over your body going into the marriage covenant give you and your spouse something to look forward to on your wedding night you know, um, going in, you you know, if you already been intimate and already sexually sexually involved with each other, you know, you know what each other can bring to the table. But imagine going in pure. Imagine going in cleansed from uh, the world's way. Uh, we get rid of pornography. Get rid of that stuff going into into the marriage covenant. Get rid of sleeping around with other people. Uh uh if you still desire to sleep with other people um and you're getting ready to get married then you should not even be considering marriage you still shouldn't be even trying to uh sleep with other ones either but definitely definitely not taking that into the marriage into the marriage covenant hebrews 13 and 4 says give honor to marriage and remain faithful to one another and remain faithful to one another in marriage god will surely judge people who are immoral and those who commit adultery god is not playing about the marriage bed this is a big big deal and so i'm going to actually uh, do a teaching um from whole um one of the bible uh, books Hosea and talk about the the, diff, the 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 big deal about adultery. Adultery is a serious serious thing, and a lot of uh, spouses don't know how much injury they're doing to their souls when they do such thing. They thinking that oh well God will forgive me or oh, God will, and He will. God is a forgiving God. He will forgive you. But listen, if I can be a voice of reasoning with you right now, don't do it. If you are doing it, stop. Um, God takes the marriage bed very very seriously. So. Um, you definitely want to just purify yourself going into the, the marriage covenant. Um, don't get married just because you can have sex. That's not the reason that you should get married. Because as much as, as great as sex is, as wonderful as it is, and, you know, we look forward to those, that's not going to be what's going to keep you married. Sex will not keep you married. Sex will not keep the love going in your marriage. You have to have more of a reason to get married than just sex. Sex is one of the benefits that God gives married couples, and we 
and we should and ought to want to enjoy those things. So just position yourself going into the marriage covenant um, and just, just, just take a pause. Even if it means you have to, you know, I'm going to go stay at my mom's or, you know, we're going to sleep in separate rooms and really just like on, on purpose, like really be intentional about, uh, uh, backing up from from sexual um intimacy with each other right now until you do get married um for the ones of us who've already entered into the marriage covenant and we did we bought you know um we bought we bought it into into our marriage you know ask god to to cleanse you ask god to uh to forgive you and ask god to you know some things that we're carrying in our spirit and we don't even realize that we're carrying and soul ties especially if we were sleeping with other people um before entering into the marriage covenant, when we've been with other people, ask God to any soul ties, denounce those spirits out of your out of your um, out of your marriage covenant. Ask God to give you a different eye and whatever it is that you need to address in the marriage bed. Some people um, have issues with intimacy because of something from the past. Some people have uh, issues with intimacy because something that took place in their childhood. Some people have um, issues with um, intimacy and sex because, you know, to them it may be disgusting. It may be, it may be something, something, it was some type of injury that took place. So that's why it's so important for the ones, I can't emphasize it enough, for the ones who are actually going into to just really take a pause and ask God to purify you. Forn uh, fornication, lust, Get rid of all that stuff before you enter into the marriage covenant. And then pornography. People think that, oh, well, if me and my husband watch pornography together, this shouldn't be a big idea. Or me and my wife watching pornography together, it shouldn't be a big idea. That is a big idea. Watching and, and uh, pornography and masturbation and all that kind of stuff, you are bringing harm. You are opening the door wide open for the enemy to come in and do the, uh, the disaster in your marriage. You are leading. And like I said, I'm not going to get in detail with this right now, but I just want to kind of like touch touch on it in, in a sense because those things are opening the door for the enemy to come in and do major, major disaster in your marriage. Some of us carry uh, things again in our bloodline. This is why it's so important to know who you're marrying. And we carry curses from our fathers or our mother's side of the family. And that stuff follows you, you know, what they, they did and then this person did and this person did as well. Surely it's gonna follow me. You gotta learn how to cut that stuff off if you can, if you can. I strongly encourage you, take a pause. If you have not said I do yet to your wife-to-be or to your husband-to-be, Use this time and ask God to purify your body, to cleanse your body, to get rid of old um, old relationships, to get rid of anything in you that is not of God. You want to go into your marriage covenant fully, holy, asking God to just take control of the marriage. But listen, okay, <laughs> I love it because... We think that, oh, we're doing something in the world by having sex because the world has made sex look so bad and so degrading. But when you go into the marriage covenant and you have God on your side and you let God uh, lead your, your bed, you let the Holy Spirit come in, I'm, I'm, that's all I'm saying. He do some things that we thought we have, we done did all. No, 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 no. You ask God to come in your marriage bed. He does some things for us. So ask God to just purify your hearts and just really prepare you and for the ones that's in it even if you're in it right now you know you already said I do and you didn't do those things you can still even now ask God to uh Lord just cleanse me I want our I want our marriage bed to be a bed of, of, of intimacy full of love I want the Holy Spirit to take over our bed uh, bedroom I want uh, the Holy Spirit to lead us and, and show us new things and give us new ideas to bring oneness marriage uh the the marriage bed is a big deal so don't take it and don't look at it as oh we're gonna go and do the same things that we used to do in the world god has so much more to offer us and people are uh, limiting themselves by uh not um not 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 being educated on things like this god wants to do something in our marriage exceedingly abundantly uh something that uh, maybe others have never experienced before but he's not able to do that if we if we don't come to him with an open heart and asking him um to, to to open us up and purify us and and show us a new way so when you say i do get rid of the, the outside people when you say i do get rid of uh uh pornography when you say i do all that mass listen guys <laughs> no shade 
but masturbation is not healthy for you. You are causing more damage on yourself and then when you are actually able to be with your spouse, you are making it very difficult for yourself. And you are, you just, you, you opening the door for the devil to come in and just cause all kinds of havoc in your marriage bed. That it's a, it becomes a health issue. And then some people have to start taking medication and stop doing it. Stop doing it. Ask God to repair, restore, heal, take over any devastations or anything that has happened in your past. Ask God to heal those areas now. I pray that with you in the name of Jesus. Praying right now, God, for any um, marriages, any husband or wife that's dealing with devastation from their from their past, from their childhood. Uh, maybe they was molested as a child. Maybe they had some type of uh, uh, something happened to them as a child where sex was involved. Maybe uh, a person that they were close to. Lord, I just plead the blood of Jesus against that and denounce those things off of marriages and just pray God that you would just allow your Holy Spirit to come in and take over the marriage bed. People think that they have to sleep with more than one person to get the satisfaction that they need in the marriage bed but God want to do so much more in your marriage bed if you allow him to come in. If you haven't said I do yet, purify your hearts, purify your bodies yourselves, take a pause from each other until you, until you get married. Give yourself something to look forward to going into the marriage covenant. And once you're in the marriage covenant, or if you're already in the marriage covenant and you did not do those things, just ask God to whatever it is, give you a different way of seeing your marriage bed. God, ask God to enhance it. Ask God to, you know, bring joy to it. Ask God to uh, breathe life in your marriage covenant, in your in your marriage bed, and do something great and amazing. I'm going to touch bases with you on this, and we're going to do more of a teaching um, and more detail about these things in detail. But I just want to share that with you sex is a beautiful thing it is one of the um uh one of uh, the best gifts that god has given to us as husband and wife don't allow the world the world's way to fool you and think that's all god has to offer god is not bored okay god is not for um He's not for how the world way does it. He does things in a holy way. And you can um, actually enjoy sex on a, on a very higher level if you allow God and the Holy Spirit to take over. Blessings.